The economic crisis that's overwhelmed Americans across the United States is having a particularly tragic effect on New York City taxi drivers. Many of them, for years, have been buried under enormous debt, and the pandemic only worsened their despair. Sadly for some, the chosen way out has been to take their own lives. And at the center of the issue are these small aluminum-plated medallions, the permits that allow cab drivers to pick up passengers. Around 2013, years ago, years ago, the price for a medallion peaked at around $1 million. $1 million, a staggering sum. Thousands of drivers, almost all of them born outside the United States, they go to any length to secure these medallions, seeing them as the pathway to the American dream. But for far too many, they've been the pathway to ruin, including brothers Richard and Kenny Chow, whose family emigrated to New York in 1987. Richard bought his taxi medallion in 2006 for $410,000. But by the time Kenny went to buy one seven years later, the price was $750,000. He did it anyway mortgaging the equity on his house. Then, rideshare apps like Uber and Lyft entered the equation, and the math for being a New York City cab driver changed. Kenny struggled to keep up with all of his bills, despite driving seven days a week. His wife had cancer. His kid had to drop out of college. Then, one day after Kenny went missing, his brother discovered his younger brother's taxi, abandoned, overlooking the East River. More than a week later, his body was found six miles downstream, Kenny Chow's suicide is not isolated, nor is his financial struggle. Right now, Richard Chow is among the taxi drivers who have been on a hunger strike outside New York's City Hall for more than a month. They're demanding that the city fix what they believe is an injustice. They say the city played a role in their plight and should do more to fix the problem, the problem of their debt. So how was this allowed to happen, and who is to blame? Here to discuss is New York City Assembly member Zoran Mamdani, and a New York City taxi driver who's been out there hunger striking with the others, Mohamedou Aliou. Thank you both for coming on the show tonight. Uh, Zoran, let me start with you. There's a breaking development on this story today. The New York Daily News is reporting that New York City has cut a deal with the private equity firm that owns almost a third of the city's medallion to reset the loans on all of its medallions to $200,000. Add in the six, city's $65 million relief fund. Is that enough for the drivers? What is your reaction to this news? This news is momentous. We, you know, I have been on hunger strike for 15 days in solidarity with the drivers. And today it is everything that we had hoped for. This is a deal that will not only create a debt of 200,000, but after that the city will provide $30,000. So every driver's maximum debt will only be $170,000. And in addition to that, the city is guaranteeing all of these loans which means that if a driver were to default on their loan, the city would step in, sell their medallion, pay the balance to the lender, and that would be it, as opposed to the current situation where lenders could then go after a driver's home, a driver's car, anything that the driver had built up over the time that they had been working on these city streets. So we are, we are ecstatic, as, as so many drivers That's... have celebrated. It's a chance to come back. That is good to hear. And let's bring in Mohamedou. Uh, you are a father of four. You started driving in cabs, I believe, in 2001. You said it was a dream come true. Explain when things started to go wrong for you and how it's impacted on you and your family. Uh, in 2004, I had a chance to buy this med and yeah. And then now uh, everything was in the American dream. By 2014, we start losing ground thanks to all the EL company out there competing with us. So we start losing ground little by little. So 2013, 14, I start uh, earning less and less. By 2016, I already lost 40 percent of the of my income. Getting 2017, wow. it was 60 percent of my loss. So it was just getting hard and harder to make money to earn a living, even though I work six to seven days, about 12 hours a day, I was going empty handed home. So uh, the dream start turning into a nightmare. Uh, missing, couldn't sleep at night. It was not like before 2014, no more. It was just hard because it was like, my life being destroyed, completely destroyed. So, like you say, five, nine of my colleagues, taxi driver committed suicide because we couldn't make it no more. Myself included, 
there is no day until today, thanks to today. Before today, there is no day I don't myself think about committing suicide. But because of the four kids, my wife always talked me out of it. So I'm grateful for today. I was able enough to make it uh, to make it today to today. Otherwise, suicide was on my mind every single day. But uh, I'm... thanks for everything that happened today. Today is a new beginning. So it's great. I'm. I'm so glad to hear you call this a new beginning, uh, and I'm so glad you've gotten through till today. And I got to ask, how the pressure you guys put on the city, on these companies, hunger strike? How long were you on hunger strike, and how has that been for you? We, uh, I've been on hunger strike for four days. Believe me, I uh, I can't thanks enough all my colleagues, all our elected officials that took part on this hunger strike, because me personally, four days is already hard. Headache, dizziness, can't really sleep only four days. So can you imagine someone going for 14, for 14 days through anger strike? It's a, we were left with no choice because uh, yeah. we've been going through that mess start in 2014. 2018, we've been going to City Hall, asking for help, begging for help. At least we can get our life back. He has to take us to come to come to come in front of the city all year for 45 days. Yeah. Not only that, we have to go and get strike like 14 days before we can get this thing so, done. But uh, after today. It seems to have it seems to have worked based on what you and Zoran are telling me tonight. Zoran, you were on hunger strike too, as were other assembly members, I believe, in solidarity. What was that like? You know, it was very, very tough. I mean, I, I was from, on hunger strike from the first day. So today was the 15th day that I was on hunger strike. And I don't think I would have ever wow. believed that I had more than two weeks without food. But you feel the symptoms of being on a hunger strike is to see your body and your mind be slowly devastated by a lack of dignity. You can't sleep because you're so hungry. You feel headaches. You feel blurred vision, dizziness. You're faint. You can't even walk up the stairs to catch the train. But then I would come to the site, I came to the protest site every day, and you would talk to our elders because the average taxi driver is more than 50 years old and is an immigrant, and you would ask them what it feels like to be five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 in debt, and they would list out the same symptoms, that they could not sleep at night, that they could not afford to buy food for their family, that they started to develop health complications that would lead to medical bills that they had never foreseen. And so we kept going because so much of the power of protest is simply to bring to light what is happening out of view and to say, if you're not comfortable with this, it means that you're not comfortable with these policies. And so you have to reckon with that and change them. Zoran. And today, it is a beautiful day. We're almost out of time. I do want one last quick question. Democrat Eric Adams is projected to be the next mayor of New York. What do you expect from him on this issue? Has he weighed in at all, briefly? He hasn't weighed in that much on this issue, and frankly, we're really excited about the fact that we've been able to resolve this issue with the de Blasio administration. But moving forward, there's still much more to come, and I do think, and I hope, that he will be a partner in resolving many of these issues for ta taxi drivers who've been left behind for decades. Yes. We'll have to leave it there. Zoran Mamdani and Mahamadou Aliou, thank you so much for your time tonight. And I have to say, if you are having thoughts of suicide, please do call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.